Hey guys, how you doing? Not quite a homeowner video in this case, but you know what? It's a repair DIY job, so we're gonna put it on the channel. I've got a 1987 Stratus 179V with a 135 horsepower Black Max Mercury motor. The trim motor for the last year or two, maybe three, this trim motor has been sounding like every time I use it, it's the last time it's going to work. So I think it's about time that I change it. Let me show you here. Now down, it sounds pretty decent. But with down, you know, you've got the weight of the motor helping it out. So this trim motor that I've got now is a three wire trim motor. So if you follow the wires up to here, it splits off and you've got a blue, a green, and a black coming out of there. The one I bought is two wire. So if I read the directions correctly, we're going to attach the positive to the starter, the blacks to a ground, and to connect the blue and green to the wires that currently trigger the blue and green to work. So, we'll figure that out there at the end, but for now, that's the plan. Let's get to it. Okay, motor strapped up. To get this trim motor off, what we've got to do is take this bracket, loosen it up, and move it out of the way. So we're going to loosen up the steering cable. We're going to take these bolts off, free this thing up. We'll get to all that right now. First, I'm going to loosen up this steering cable nut. And I apologize, I don't know the exact size of that, but here's the, the cable's already coming loose. We're gonna loosen up this nut to loosen the bracket. All right, to make it easier to get this nut off, I'm gonna take the screws out that are holding the cable in place. save these clips because we'll route the new wire through the same way and put it together hold it in place with these clips too okay right. now we can get a better rotation on this Okay, so I had a problem with the threaded portion spinning with this nut. So what I'm doing is leaning on the steering cable a little while I loosen this by hand. And by putting that extra force down on it and kind of pinching it so that the threaded portion doesn't spin with this one nut here. Okay guys, so the next step is to take these bolts off from the bracket. I've already strapped this up as you remember, so it's gonna hold the motor. So we gotta get to this one from inside the transom. Way back in there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is use this long extension, 3 8 extension with a three quarter inch socket. And I've got a 
7 8 and 3 quarter inch box wrench here. I'll use the 3 quarter inch on this bolt here. And with the long extension and a ratchet, we'll break that loose. Okay, that's that one. What I did was I left this nut on the end of the bolt so I can tap it in there without damaging the threads. Because so I'm going to need to get that bolt pretty much all the way through so I can get this bracket loose. Now let's, let's do this top one. This one's easy by comparison. All right, so we're going to tap these screws and bolts through there. I'm going to take the nuts off all the way. Right, the next thing we got to do is take off these three bolts. These are five eighths of an inch hex. Now we can work this bracket loose. All right. So now that the bolts are out and put, or nuts are off and the bolts are pushed through, this bracket should move right out, which it does. You can see it slides right off of that pin. Okay. And now we can lift it up and get to that screw right there. Okay. Okay, guys, so if you take a look at this motor and the bottom piece on it okay that's what's inside there you see where the two bolts would that I just took out would it be here and here on those corners okay so this whole contraption is what's in there and uh, when I took it apart last week to see if I could clean up the motor a little and see if it would work better it was a little challenging to get that out what I did and what I'm gonna do again is we're gonna Use a screwdriver and kind of twist it back and forth so it can pull up. There is a little slot underneath it right there. I don't know if you can see that, but right there, where you can put a screwdriver in there, kind of twist it a little up and down. So we might do that as well. Let's see how this works. Okay, now I've got cardboard and a pan under here because some of the fluid is going to be coming out. And here it comes. But basically, I use the screwdriver to twist it a little so I get access to the ears of the, where the bolts are sticking out. And then I tap them up a little. Didn't take too much. And it worked itself up and out. Okay, so this is what we're looking at.
Same thing as what I got in the box. Just newer and better, hopefully. All right, the next step will be disconnecting the wires. You got the blue, green, and this black. So we'll loosen those up and then disconnect, clip the ties and feed it through. Let me show you how that happens. We don't have to hold any of those on. We can leave this out completely, put it back in place, and tighten it down on nothing. I think we'll do that just so that it's there if we ever need it for something else one day. Who knows? All right, that's that. Just going to snip our wire ties, holding everything together. this feeds through here there's a grommet here Oops, hold on. there's a grommet in there and that grommet has a split in it so with that split a wire can come out and in real easily right now we'll just pull these through they should there we go, it's pulling it through. Let's see if I can show you this. Okay, if I use the screwdriver, I can should be able to push that grommet out. Okay. Now I can actually Feed it back up here a little bit so I can work the wires out because you kind of got to take them out one at a time because all three don't fit on it at the same time. So there you go. It just popped right off. It's got this split. Hopefully yours does. Maybe that's just because someone already did work to this <laughs> and made it that way, but it'll make it a lot easier when we put it back together too. So all we've got to do here is just feed the wire through. Take the motor out. Drop it down. I'm trying to do this holding a camera. It's not quite as easy. There we go. Okay. The old motor's out. All right, so far so good guys we got the motor out listen if you're liking this video if it's helping you click like subscribe to the channel um, you know we've got all kinds of videos about all the things around your home that I'm working on uh, this happens to be my boat but that's okay we'll do some other projects outside the home too like this so if you like it click like subscribe to the channel and uh, I appreciate you watching okay let's get this new motor ready to go Clip that there, get the wires loose. I'm gonna clip these. Now they gave me a couple of bolts to use with this motor and the lock washers. I'm gonna measure them against the old ones and see, are they the same? They look longer, and I think the reason they're longer is because this is twice the thickness of the old one. That makes sense, doesn't it? So, all right, let's see. All right, guys, so without getting too terribly technical, we're just going to take these two screws, the one from the old, put it in the old, the one from the new, put it in the new, and we're going to just look and say, uh, are those threads sticking out even close to the same distance? And yeah they are maybe a sixteenth of an inch longer sticking through this okay no big deal 
we'll tighten it down um, maybe what I'll do is just for fun stick that bolt into there and see how deep I can get it make sure it's gonna thread in deeper than I need it to okay guys here's what I did I tightened this screw down as far as I could in the threads that are in the trim and now I'm holding this new motor up to it and it looks like it'll definitely compress enough or, or thread in enough to hold the motor so we should be more than good there hey guys all right another thing is if you've done this before or you're watching me do this in this video you've got some ideas leave a comment let people know what you think I should be doing better different what you did um, you know I tried to find videos on this stuff and it was there was not many so if you can leave a comment and help someone else out that'd be great I know I sure would have appreciated more comments in some of the videos I saw hopefully this will help more people out that way thanks what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of fluid on these o-rings and that first, first o-ring is already popped them free let's make sure that doesn't happen okay okay let's go ahead and put these bolts in place I'm not going to snug them down much. I'm just going to very carefully and slowly work one and then the other. it matters but I'm just trying to keep the o-rings from getting screwed up by going in too aggressively on corner okay that should be good good and tight that's about how tight I think I want it. it's about good and tight <laughs> next thing we'll do is feed these wires up through this hole tight we might have to hmm only both go through at the same time maybe maybe not okay well we got it let me show you what I did to get this bracket to stay up in this position I just took the long screwdriver shoved it through in there and then set the bracket down on it so now it'll drop back down what i'm doing here is i'm just holding the wires and trying to push the sheathing down more towards the motor side because it was it was right up to the end here and i just want more flexibility on this end And now you can see I have all the extra wire on this end and the sheathing is just nice and close down at the motor end. Okay, so typically before I ever get anything really bolted down and put together, I'm going to kind of test it out. So we're going to work on the wiring a little bit, connect a couple things before we even totally disconnect the other stuff. We're going to just touch some wires, make sure things work the way I think they will, and take it from there. Okay, the starter solenoids. So we're going to take this end, connect it there.
and I'll adjust this a little bit later as we need to. Okay, using a half inch socket, I'm taking this off here. That's the main ground. And we will reconnect it with this in there. Okay. We're getting somewhere. Now let's take the big blue one and plug it into the big blue one. And plug the big green one into the big green one. I've created a little jumper here. We're going to connect. Now yeah, we'll stick the. Now yeah, we'll do the green one. We're going to put it in the green there. touch it to the green that is there oh it sounds like it works all right let's check the up we're gonna put our jumper in on this blue wire connect it to where the blue wires we're going all right that's great. It tells us a couple things. Of course, first of all, it tells us that the motor works at all. It tells us that we've probably got some connections in the right places, so that's good. And, um, you know, now I'm going to feel pretty comfortable buttoning this back up, putting that bracket back on, securing the motor, and then, you know, we'll finagle the wires to where we really want them and get some good connections in there with the other wires and the ends that are on them, take them off those solenoids. We'll see how this goes. Continuing on. All right, going backwards from what we did before, I'm gonna move the bracket in place. I think. <laughs> Sorry, let's, okay. I'm gonna put the bracket back in place and we will start with Putting those three bolts back in where they need to go. And it looks like these holes aren't lined up, so we're going to have to line them up. Let's see what we need to do to do that. Looks like that works. There we go. Okay. So by manipulating the strap that I have here up and down just a little bit, it Got the right positioning, it looks like, on these bolt holes. So we should be able to get those back in there. You could also do this with a jack underneath the engine. Maybe a jack and a, a board or something, I'm sure. I would probably cut a V in the top of like a 2x8 or a 2x10. That way it would kind of straddle the lower unit. Now that I've got them started with a hand ratchet, we'll go ahead and use this guy.
Okay. Those are in. Now, we'll tappy tap these bolts back through. Okay. Went in pretty easily. Now we can put those nuts back on there. Took it apart, quarter inch. Stack it down real good. Now we need to use our super extension. back together now we got to tighten this back down I just found out last night we were driving around town we saw there's gonna be a Harbor Freight opening in town five minutes for me you don't know how excited I am you know when you want one of the things they carry you don't have to drive 30 minutes to get it that's gonna be great All right, here's a question for you guys. If you wouldn't mind leaving a comment, how tight am I supposed to get this nut against this bracket? That's something I was wondering when I was messing with this before. So I get a little snug, supposed to leave it loose, is supposed to be cranked down, uh, you know, let me know. So now we're gonna push this steering cable up to this threads and start tightening that up. Okay, there we go. So as I tighten this, that would be looser. It's pulling it through. Now it's snug, but again, how snug is that supposed to be, guys? Let me know. We've got those clips that we took off before, if you remember. Let's see. Hey, where'd you guys go? twisting this wire so that it's more okay so we have one of these just goes over the wire just like that and then this little metal clip it just sits over it like so Use a regular Phillips screwdriver, it might be easier. And we'll bend it like that. Put the other clip on there. And again. A little metal cover and the screw and we'll just use nothing special or a little screwdriver to tighten that down okay nice all right what do you think guys I think it looks pretty good coming out of the motor feeding through here got a little slack should be good 
So next we'll feed it up through into the motor here and remember that grommet that goes in there has a nice slit in it so you can feed the wire up not worry about where it's going much because that grommet will just open up in the slit and go right over it and then you can push it down into place all right guys well took a little break and uh <laughs> have some extra good news so it turns out that the problem i had with this motor where it would slowly drop down has also gone away with this new motor so for since i've had the boat after 10 15 minutes the motor would drop from you know three quarters of the way up to you know pretty far down so i thought those would be the seals in there but apparently the seals on the motor end are what was causing that problem so that's great i got that fixed too and all we had to do to get the wiring hooked up was take the blue and green out of the wire harness there ones that were connected to these solenoids uh, that's the up and the down and then i simply soldered them to the end where the bullet connector was on the uh, relay you know piece of wire that they gave me with this thing so really simple there and i used some marine heat shrink tubing that's important because the marine heat shrink tank bleh, the marine heat shrink tubing has a a little gel or whatever inside that melts and then seals the end so that should work out really well too i decided for now i'm just going to leave these old solenoids in place to get them off i would need to Take the air box off, loosen up these screws, take the cover off to get to the screws that hold this piece on to the carburetor. And then I'd take this whole assembly off and then get to those bolts. You know what? It'll be fine the way it is. I'll leave them on there for now. One day maybe I'll take it apart further. I just zip tied the relays up here a little bit, zip tied the wires a little bit, and tucked it away. Looks pretty good. Snip off this, snip off this, and there you go. Check this out. Nice and quiet. Nice and fast too. And like I said here, an added bonus is that it stays put that's gonna be awesome you know it used to be when I was idling around putting that little bit of force on the prop with idling around I'd want to have it trimmed up and that force would just push it down as I was idling now I think it'll stay up where I want it which is just gonna be awesome you know also when I was running I'd be running it full throttle try to trim up a little bit keep the bow up and you know get the right angle there um, the right amount of trim and it would bleed off after you know a minute 30 seconds So I'd have to constantly trim it up a little bit and a little bit, but that motor was getting weaker and weaker So I really almost couldn't do it so Big success here guys. I think this is gonna be awesome. I hope this helps you out Please leave any comments with questions or other advice for other people doing this job and uh, Well, we'll see you in the next video Thanks for watching